So this is a mixture of uh, Game Changers, which is EXP, and uh, Real Estate B-School. So you are in the right place if you're in, and guests. If you guys know any agents that are struggling, if you're a coaching client of Real Estate B-School and you know an agent that's struggling and you're here on this call, invite them to this call. Or if you're in Game Changers Nation, powered by EXP Realty, there are a ton of agents that are struggling. Feel free to grab the monthly agenda every month and text it out to 50 agents you know and invite them on these calls. There's a massive opportunity to impact a ton of agents that don't have this. This is not normal for most brokerages or most most agents aren't able to tap into super good looking and smart people like Dave Caggiano. You know, it's just a it's just a rarity. The time we have set aside today is uh, for the training referral marketing upgrade. And I'm going to give you guys some super tactical um, tools that you can start using in your business right away. So that's that's the big promise. And the premise of this training, you know, the re reason I asked for lead sources, and most of the time, it's someone that knew you. You know, you guys are always the whole industry, not just you guys. You're always looking for like the latest and greatest lead gen tactic. Like just give me the lead gen tactic when what if you could only generate business from a client like or people that knew you, like there was no other option. Some of you, that's that's the only way you do generate business. But for the most part, as an industry, we're just looking for the, the latest and greatest lead gen tactic. And so today we're going to focus on a, a couple aspects of a little bit on database marketing, but also how to set up your clients um, so they're predisposed to keeping, um, what's the RAS, the reticular activator system. You're kind of like setting the stage to do a good job for them. And as a result, they're going to be looking to send you business. And so it's really turning every client you work with into multiple clients and having that mindset. What if you only had one client? Every one of you had to start your business over again with one client. And the way you treated that client was the only way you could get new business without having to beg for referrals, right? So the one client can turn into maybe one, or maybe they sent you two clients that closed, or then you have two more clients that maybe they send you one or two pieces of business. And it can become this, this just a totally different way of looking at your business. It doesn't mean you give up anything that's working, right? If you're working expireds or FISBOs or circle prospecting or whatever you're doing to generate business, even home search leads, if you're still getting that to work, it just means that once you get that client, we have a different mindset of working with them. And client care can actually become, in addition to, to just a touch system, and we'll go through that, client care can actually become a lead gen lever in your business. So now I want you guys asking questions, leaving comments, giving me examples as we go. And I'll sort of pause here and make sure that this all sort of makes sense. And I'll share a couple documents that you guys should be able to swipe right away in your business. Um, actually, before I, before I even get started, every, I want everyone to go into the chat and tell me the percentage of your business. In the last 12 months, the percentage of your business that was generated from people that like knew you, like you, trust you, so existing people. I just want to get a feel for it. So 100, 170, 80, 100. All right. So most of you, it's most of your business, which is awesome. There are some of you that are trying to get away from it. The, the, the training today is to help you double your business. Even if you're doing 100%, you may think that I think what happens is agents think that I'm already at 100%. I can't do any more referrals. But this is like you can double your business. It may still stay 100%, but you're going to be doing three, four homes a month versus one, two homes a month based, based on this training. So Brandon says 20%. So Brandon, for you, so Brandon is really good. So 0%. Uh, that's not good. We got to definitely don't want zero. But even so, if you're good at like... Um, so Brandon is is really good. Has no fear of the phone. He can work expires and fisbos and set listings and very high skill set. But now the opportunity is how do you get to 50-50 and do nothing different? Just put systems in place around client care 
where like there's as much new business coming in on every closing because of the process you've laid out for them and the promises that you're making. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So Scott's 33%, um, 50%, 25%. And I think it should be a, a good 50% of your business. Like if you're actually scaling your real estate business or you're growing your real estate business, I think it, you know, you could do three, four deals per month, you know, 30, 40, 50 deals per year. And half of it, or even more can be from people that, that know, know you, like you and trust, trust you. Um, Oh, so yeah. So if you're on a Zillow flex team, so we're not going to go through it to, we'll go through it a little bit today, but you definitely, even if you're on a team, you definitely want to start to build out your own database, your own, you, you want to turn every client into an existing, into a, a, another closing. So this will be good. All right. So let me share my screen and then we'll get after it here. And Annalise, there's only two documents I'm going to share today. So I'll, I'll kind of bring them up here. Um, and I've got a new setup with my screen. So you guys have to help me out a little bit. I think I'm going to share just Canva here. All right. So Tom Moretti, can you see my screen okay? Awesome. Perfect. Just a thumbs up is good. All right. So let's, um, let me put you guys over here. I still have all your pretty faces. All right. So let's get after it. So um, kind of like the, the, the leading question here, and, and I believe the future of your business is, is as close to a hundred percent as it could be based on the gist of this training. So it's a combination of, you know, building your database, doing some sort of touch system and delivering an experience to your clients that just blows them away. And so the question I want you to ask yourself is, you know, how am I thinking about my business in terms of my ability to scale solely based on the service I provide and the people I know? So let me ask you guys this and let me pull up the chat here. Uh, where the heck did it go? Chat. All right, chat. All right. I want you guys to go in the chat and tell me on a scale of one to five, one being like, I get my clients to closing, but there's, it's super unpredictable. It's like, sometimes we barely get to closing. There's no checklist or processes in place. And a five is like, every time I knock their socks off, there's all these special touch points that have nothing to do with real estate. I use gifting in the, you know, in the process. Give me an idea, scale of one to five. I want to hear from everyone. Where do you think your business is in the terms of just the service you provide? So we've got a lot of good scores. So that's good. So I'm going to open it up at the end as well, because you guys can definitely add to this conversation. So some two threes, some fours, Fury's a four, Ginny's a five. All right. So not as bad as I thought. Not everyone's answered. Maybe the ones and twos. I know when, when it was me and I was running and gunning, especially when I had none of this stuff in place, it was, it was like, I mean, I got them to closing, but it was not, it was not pretty. So I would have graded myself, even though I was doing a lot of transactions, I would not have graded myself really high. Um, so anyone that graded themselves a five, I want you to suspend disbelief and still look for, because a five is like, there's no room for improvement. So I would definitely look for areas to improve your business here. So um, I'll set the stage a little bit. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, especially with some fives in the group. I want to make sure we leave some time for masterminding. Um the industry in a lot of different ways, especially on the buy side now, you're going to be put in a position where you have to sit down with a buyer and you're going to have to convince them that you're worth $20,000. So on a $600,000 buyer, you're going to have to sit them down straight faced and you're going to have to say, I'm worth every bit of 3% of the purchase price because there's going to be a big fat zero in the Cobrook uh, in your MLS. That's probably happening in the next six to 12 months in most MLSs. So... That's a major shift in the industry. And on the listing side, generally people don't think we're earning, you know, the kind of commissions that we get. So there's this massive shift in the industry. Um, most real estate agents, maybe not some of the ones on here, but most real estate agents, their service is just uh, abysmal. There are no processes in place. There isn't this like well thought out 
like I'm getting paid a ridiculous amount of money to help these folks. And it's a single agent kind of haphazardly getting clients to the finish line versus like a systematic process. Um, and in general, you know, all of the, the, the reason you'll want to dig in on this specific tactic, some of the things I'm, I'm going to go through is that the Zillow's out there. Um, you know, I talked to a guy that spent $36,000 on building out YouTube and got a zero closings in three years from it. There's plenty of people out there that will take your money. Um, but nobody will come into your business and teach you this as a way to generate new business. So, so that's, that's the, the, the golden opportunity that you guys have here. Um, generally everyone's out for our money and it, it, it gets to a point where it's most people that are spending money to generate new business are getting like an abysmal, abysmal return if, if any return. And then we've got tech, you know, every, every buyer and seller thinks they know everything because they looked up their estimate and, you know, they're going to argue with you at the listing appointment. And, you know, they've got whatever search portal that they're using, you know, that, that they just generally don't think they, they need us. But has anyone read the book? Raise your hand. If you've read the book, uh, which book is this from? The Thank You Economy by Gary V. Anyone read that book? It's really good. I don't love I don't love Gary V generally his vibe because it's like grind grind grind. I'm taking meetings at like 1 a.m. on a Friday. Um but this book Thank You Economy is really really powerful. Um and here's a quote from it. We're living in a in what I, I like to call the thank you economy because only the companies that can figure out how to how to mine their manners in a very old-fashioned way and to do it authentically are going to have a prayer at competing. And so I, I think everyone has to decide there. Does anyone live in a market where there aren't a lot of agents? Raise your hand if like you're the only agent in your market. Does any raise your hand if you're like in a sea of agents where it's like, how could there possibly be this many agents? I live in a market, Fury's in the same market where it's like, I think there's like 20,000 agents in Charlotte right now. At one point back in the day, it was like 15,000. The market cleared it out in 2008, 9, 10 to like 5,000. Um, but there, we are a dime a dozen, a dime a dozen. Doesn't mean that you suck, you're good, bad, or indifferent, but this mindset that you have to, you have to build your brand based on the service you provide. And it's just a decision and it's going to come over time. And I didn't used to think this way. So this wasn't necessarily my philosophy when I first got into the business and home search leads were you're, were actually super high quality. And, you know, I did radio for a period of time and I got 35 inbound calls in a single month. All of that stuff went to zero, right? So at this point, it's a totally different survival thrive mechanism in your business. And it just comes down to a decision. So at the very least today, you're not going to implement all these things out of the gate, but at the very least, I want you to make the decision that when someone does a deal with you, even if they've done 10 other transactions before, the one transaction that they did with you is the service in all those other 10 transactions times 10. And you're gonna build this out in a way where all the real estate stuff happens, even if there's turbulence, you handle it in a way but then you just implement all these touch points along the process as well. And we'll get into a little bit, a little bit of that. So let's get into to some of the some of the teaching points. So anybody know an agent that is like, I'm number one, you know, billboards in your market. And like it's all about it. They're like a me monster. Raise your hand if you've seen that agent. It's like 90% of agents. 90% of agents actually think that like when I post something on Facebook, it has to be like. Um, or those God awful January posts where like Jim Fury goes online and he's like, I just want to thank all my clients and, you know, for me selling all these homes. And it's just like, I just really, I feel so blessed to have these great clients. It's like, no, you're literally going online and you're making yourself the, the hero. It's all about you. So in everything you do, make it about your clients. So if you're going to post something if you want people to attach you to being a, an authority or an agent or whatever, um, you're going to make it a, about the client. You know, so if you're doing a Facebook Live, so Mark Gios is doing a Facebook Live, and he's like, "Hey, I just got you know 
want to just jump on here real quick, you know, just navigated a tricky situation. Maybe some of you are considering listing your home or whatever, and this came up, right? And then you tell the story of the client, you know, so it's not about, it's not so much about you, it's about the client or when you're, that's why we use testimonials and we focus on Google reviews and all of that. You want to make sure you, you tell their story. You know, after every closing, we would take a picture with the client and we would have, you know, them say some words on video. So we really did a good job of capturing all these moments. Um, I forget what his name was, but we had a we had one of these production masterminds. Does every anyone remember the mastermind we did on one of these Tuesday calls where a guy had done a really good job of capturing uh, video testimonials? He would at closing, he would get all of his clients just to say a one or two minute, and he had them all posted on a website. It was really really cool. So you want to get into that mindset that you're going to capture. You know, you want to make it a, a, about the people. Um, has everyone, anyone ever read the book, Donald Miller, building a story brand? It's, it's worth reading. It can get really complicated if you kind of like go down their implementation path, but essentially you just want to be their guide and have a solution for them. So the reason if you've gone through our buyer consultation framework or our listing consultation framework, and you see the seven step process, this is B school, the seven step process you know, and, you know, we have a roadmap for the buyer side and we have a seller guide that has a roadmap. And it's because we, we're just their guide along the process. Like it, they're the main character. They have a problem. You know, we're the ones that are able to come alongside them, uh, come alongside them. So this is that messaging filter. Anytime you put out something, you know, run it through a filter like this, where you, you're, you're, you know, that you're telling the story of your client. That's like really, really important. It's 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 not about you. Um, and then social proof. Who here has over 20 Google reviews? Anyone over 50? 100? I, I think everyone needs to have a goal to get over 100 Google reviews. So it once you get over that tipping point, um, you will get business from from like organically. So real quick story. Um, I was checking out of my dentist uh, at, at one point and I was new to the practice and the girl checking me out was basically grabbed her phone and she says, have you left us a five-star review yet? And I'm like, no, I haven't. And she said, okay, uh, do you, did you have a five-star experience today? She's like, pull up a browser plug this in and she got me to the page and she said, yeah, go ahead and just, you know, do that and say some words and then hit submit. And, and I said, that was awesome. She didn't know that these, the owners of this practice uh, were on radio uh, with me. And I, I kind of knew one of them uh, better than the other two. Um, but I said, you know, I asked her two questions. I'm like, do you get paid anything extra to do that? And why do you think the owners have you do that? And this is me, like super nerdy business guy. She said, "Yeah, I get paid a little bit of a little bit uh, a, a little bonus for every one that I get." And the owners told us that mass media is not returning anymore, and most of their business is coming from organic search on Google. And so, instantly, I went back to the office and we implemented a system where everyone and you could do you can get it. Um, and I'm gonna share one other thing with you guys here. But you've got to put yourself in a position. I think I'm not with uh, high-performance real estate anymore, um, but this simple process of asking everyone you know to review you on Google, if that's all you did this year, in addition to a couple other things I'm going to give you, you would be in a phenomenal position to generate more business. Um, let me share one script. I'm going to go off script a little bit here. Let me share one more thing here. I'll actually bring it up when I do the show and tell. And I just put this together, but this will be really helpful. Google review. I'll go through this here. Google review script. All right, I've got pulled up. All right, so I'll, I'll do a, I'll, I'll get to that in a, in a moment here. I'm going to give you guys three concrete tools that you'll implement in your business going forward. All right, can you guys, Justin, can you still see my screen here? Thumbs up. All right, perfect. All right. <clears throat> so I'm going to land this thing, I promise. 
Um, so this this concept of telling their story, you know, social pr proof is essentially just getting Google reviews, doing a good, good job, asking other agents even to leave you a Google review, and you can do the same for them, right? Good thing about Google, it doesn't have to be linked to a property as long as it's authentic. You never want to kind of game these systems. Um, when it comes to getting business from people that know you, there's a whole process that we follow to organize your database, but you've got to put some time into deciding what you're going to send your database. So we call this a touch system. Once you give it a little bit of thought and you build, then we have calendars around you know, how to do it. Um, and we can share these uh, marketing calendar and a, a social content calendar. But you pre-decide before the year starts what your touches are going to be. And then you just make sure that you're implementing these touches. So um, it's it's nothing's complicated about it, but unless you commit to doing it, you're not going to do it. You know, we're bringing agents into real estate B school into our million dollar agent method program that are 20 years in the business and they haven't built a database or a touch a touch system. Right. So even if regardless of where you are, you you have to organize your database, you have to build it every day and you have to touch it regularly. And social is just an extension of of the database, essentially. Um, I'm, I'm not going to go through that. And then this part here, I want to tell one more story. Then I'm going to share some uh, some resources with you guys and then we can mastermind some of this. You have to envision, so th there are so many agents out there. Generally, we're not differentiated. Uh, we're all the same to the consumer. When they get done doing a transaction with, with you, they have to realize that it was different. It was amongst the best experiences they've received in any service environment ever whether it's like going to the best hotel or the best restaurant or the best spa day or the best whatever, we have to put your the experience they get with you on that par. And so that's the mindset I want you to have around it. Um, we don't think of ourselves as, as businesses, which is a, a big, big problem. Um, I actually received, this is out of order, but we were, we were on a flight um, and we got this note from our, our what would you call a, a male stewardess? Um, a flight attendant. Yeah. So he just wrote us this note, right? And then I pull up my phone as I'm leaving the, you know, you get off the plane and you're pulling up your email. And I got this email from American Airlines. You know, so obviously he wanted to make sure that that there was something different and it was a fine flight, but no one had ever written me a handwritten note on an airplane before. So this left an impression. Um, so when you ask yourself in the context of a real estate transaction, how many times could you leave an impression on your client that has even nothing to do with real estate? You know, um, it's an, it's just an amazing opportunity, but then also survey your clients. You know, so we would do uh, net promoter score surveys, which is is literally this question: How likely are you to recommend Lars Hedenborg, real estate agent, to a friend or colleague? Colleague, where ten equals extremely likely and zero e equals extremely unlikely. Standard question. You can't change it. You should be asking this question at least one time, maybe at the end of the closing table, and you want to gather this data over time. Um, you could do it in a Google form. We've kept it super simple. There are, there are, you know, entire, and there's an entire industry built around net promoter score, but are you actually trying to do these special moments with your clients? And then do you have any measurement in place of the experience that, uh, clients are getting with you? I'm going to go through this document and give you access to it. And also the script around it, but this is. Raising the bar in your service level starts when you sign up a buyer or sign up a seller. And so I want everyone to commit to doing this in their business. And even if you're not at the point where you're delivering a world-class Ritz-Carlton experience, when you start making this promise, you will up your game.
So I'm a create the problem kind of guy. We're like, I'll figure it out. You know, once I get someone to buy into this promise, I'll figure out how to deliver the world-class experience. So hopefully you guys can take a leap of faith. Do not overthink. Like I don't have all the systems built out yet. I don't, right. You're just going to make a promise. So at the end, so uh, let's just pretend they've signed a listing agreement. You know, so Harrison, uh, I've got one more thing before, um, before I run here. You know, we have something called the high performance promise. You know, we want this experience with our, uh, you know, this process of selling your home to be an experience that you couldn't possibly imagine being any, any better. Um, you know, everyone's focused on, and if you don't have a team, you modify this. So don't overthink that part as well. Um, our system, so my systems, everything I do is designed around delivering on this promise. Um, you know, we focus, I focus on what you need and what you want. I'm going to make every effort to be out in front of everything, prevent any surprises, you know, granted it's real estate, there will be turbulence, but I'll be on top of all of it. Um, and I want to make this process as hassle-free as possible. And that's what uh, I call whatever you're going to call your promise, right? In return, I need your help, you know, from, from this moment, right? Where we're all excited about getting your home on the market, until we get it under contract, until we get to the closing table, you 100% will come across people that are looking to buy or sell real estate or invest in real estate. And assuming I'm delivering on this promise, uh, and I forget what the actual script, um, you know, I want you to send me people that are looking to, to, to buy or sell. And if, if you don't, I'm going to assume that I didn't deliver on the promise and I'm going to want to talk to you about it. You know, so you're not kind of, you're kind of putting it on them, but you're more putting it on yourself. Like, Hey, I'm going to make sure this experience just blows you away. And when I do that, you're going to send me referrals. If you don't send me referrals, I'm going to assume that I didn't do my job and I'm just going to want to have a conversation about it. Cause I'm always looking to get better. And that's the promise. Go ahead. I'm going to sign this document. You go ahead and sign it. So this is actually in your buyer packet, in your listing packet. We've got more complicated scripts around it and touch points that you can implement. But the basic thing that I want you guys to take away, I'm going to give you access to this document and I want you to create a version of it on your own in Canva or Google Docs or whatever you, you, you do and make this part of your buyer presentation and your seller presentation. It's the last thing you do once you've secured a client. And then we've got deeper dive scripts that I'll give you guys access to. Um, but I want you guys to each commit to that. Uh, let me think if there's anything else I want to go through here. That's the gist of it. I want to get you these tools. Um, <clears throat> the, the, the backdrop to all of this is that we want to put you in a position where you're not so obsessed with the left side of this funnel. Everyone is like, okay, I'm going to do YouTube. I'm going to do Facebook ads. I'm going to do whatever. Like I've done all these things, right? So some of these things work. But the thing that is going to work long-term and compound on itself is doing such a good job of getting, stitching all of this together when you're having your conversations, when you're setting your, your, your consultations, when you're meeting with folks, you're signing them up and you're getting them to the closing table, you're making that commitment that you're going to deliver a service that will, you know, it will be a we'll be in front of everything. And if anything goes wrong, we're going to be as proactive as possible. And then when you do that right, they become the thing that feeds top of funnel. And then you don't have to look for all the lead sources and you're not constantly, you know, focused on, you know, paying money to have people send you leads that are super crap quality. And you're not tending to your database. You're not putting a client care process in place that's referral worthy. So that's kind of just a good good visual for you there. And then some of you, when even the fives, even the fours and fives, that like rate, rate yourself fours and fives, when you think about it in the context of all the other businesses that people are experiencing. So does anyone raise your hand if you have a top golf in your market? And raise your hand, your other hand, if you have like a crappy old rundown driving range in your market. Can you imagine? I mean, I guess there are still people that are like, I'm not going to go to Top Golf because I'm hardcore. But can you imagine being like next to a Top Golf if you're like the crappy old, dirty, dungy driving range? Like, I guess there could be different markets, you know? So, uh, 
whatever, but you, you don't want to be the old, like, I'm just barely going to, you know, check the box on providing, you know, a bucket of balls and like a tea to put it on. And like, you know what I mean? Like, you don't want to be, that's how most agents are. You want to be designing something that's more like top golf where there's actually an experience. Um, does anyone raise your hand if you have a lifetime fitness in your, in your market? Yeah, we have one. It's like the Taj Mahal of now. Some of you are like, I'm a CrossFitter. You know, I would never walk into a spa like gym. But the point here is like, I don't know. What's the what's the one that's like, it's like $5 a month and it's like 24 hours a day or something. Like I've never been in one of those facilities, but I promise you they're not making their, like, it's not a great experience. I think you have like cards where you check yourself in and out. There's no people in there and whatever. You want to think about your business as like, I'm going to create a business that competes with the experience that people get when they go to Top Golf. It competes with the experience people get when they go to Lifetime Fitness, right? You go to Top Golf and there's like someone that greets you, you know, when you walk in and they make sure that you know how to get around if you're meeting a group there or if you're new to the facility. You want to mentally think about your business as being able to compete because they go to a Top Golf, they go to a Lifetime Fitness, and then they visit you. And it's like, oh, yeah, so, you know, we'll show you some homes. I'll meet you at a home. We'll like, oh, now we got to talk about the agreement and like, oh, there's no co-broken here. So I got to figure out how to explain the lawsuit. And it's like this convoluted, half-assed, half-baked, no thought around like world-class experience for a client. So for some of you, it's just going to take a little bit of work to sit down and just re-envision what you want that experience to look like for your clients. And this is not rocket science, guys. You know, it's like you could start with a piece of paper and, and just write out the steps and then you could interject. Well, yeah, it might be nice if I do this at this point, or it might be nice if I deliver some send out cards, brownies here. It might be nice if I implement Client Giant, which Client Giant is an awesome tool, by the way. If you guys aren't using that, I highly, highly recommend it. Um, all right, let me, um, I'm not going to go through brand authority. This is just some of the social stuff that you should be doing. Um, I want to get into, let me stop my screen share. And any questions? Yeah, Planet, Planet Fitness, LA Fitness. There's apparently uh, apparently uh, more, more of them. Um, all right, let me share my screen over here. And then Annalise, if you can make sure we share these documents. Let me see. I think that's the right one. <clears throat> All right. Can you guys see my screen? Can you guys see my screen with this, our high performance promise? Awesome. Yeah. So this is the document. Um, Annalise, if you can post this, it's Reb's promise sheet sample. So you could change the words my instead of our, if you have no, you know, nobody supporting you. But I want every one of you to, to integrate some kind of promise into your business as quickly as possible. And just make this your own and don't overthink it. It's the last thing. So when you sign a listing, hey, one more thing. When you sign a buyer, hopefully you guys aren't showing homes and like haphazardly doing buyers. Hopefully you're listing your buyers in a actual presentation and getting them to sign the, the, the agreement or a loyalty agreement. You're going to say, hey, one more thing, Mr. or Mrs. Buyer. You know, I have something that I call the whatever peak performance promise, right? My goal is to create an experience that's just, you cannot imagine being any better. My focus, you know, everything I do is focused around creating this Ritz Carlton experience for, for, for selling your home. Um, my systems, everything I do is designed around delivering on this promise, uh, focusing 100% on what you want and what you need and making everything as hassle-free as possible. And I'm going to do the very best I can to stay out in front of everything and to prevent surprises. Granted, it's real estate and there will be turbulence that comes up, but don't worry, we're going to land this plane. I'll land it, land it with you. And that's my performance promise. In return, I need your help. Sometime between now and the day we close on your house, you will send us the name of somebody that needs help in real estate. And if you don't, I'm just going to assume that I dropped the ball and I did not knock your socks off with this Ritz Carlton, you know, performance promise that I just went through. And I'm just going to want to have a conversation with you about it. Is that fair? 
and be like, okay, great. You sign it and then you push the paper over and they sign it. That's it. And then the cool thing my team would do on buyers and sellers, we would get the whole listing packet and the whole buyer packet scanned and emailed to the husband and wife. And we would put the promise on the top of it. So it would be the top page, even though there's all the other documents, we put it on the top of that entire scan packet when we send it back to them. All right. Can everyone raise your hand and commit to implementing this in your business? Who's not raising your hand? Kajiano's not. Chaka's not. All right. Everyone's committing. I'm telling you guys, just making this promise will help you elevate your game over time. And it'll bring an entirely different sort of mindset to the business. So the second document, and you can share this um, as well, Annalise, uh, is the promise script. So this is just, I never used this script, but this has different, you know, after the listing appointment, after a buyer appointment. Um, if, if you have a listing client care, you can modify all these to do on your own. If you have a transaction coordinator, post-closing, and what our team would do. And, and so this just gives you a, a whole lot more that you can integrate in the process. You can literally take this to the point where, okay, you're making the promise at the consultation, you know, whatever. You get the listing active on the MLS and then you have another touch point and you're checking in on the promise. They go under contract, then you're checking on the promise and you're just calling them saying, hey, I just want to follow up. I made a big promise when we started working together. We just got the property under contract. A little bit of turbulence might be coming here because there's a buyer involved now and we don't know if they'll be squirrely, but I just wanted to check in and to see, to see if I was delivering on the promise that I made. Anything I could be doing better, right? So you're taking the feedback in real time and you're improving your business for the next client. Great, okay, so it was a little weird when I communicated with you and the husband was out of the loop and he got pissed, okay. Check. I can make sure that, you know, if I'm talking to one of you, I send an email where I'll, I'll copy you both on the, you know, so you can, you can get out ahead of everything. Uh, three days post-closing. Hey, congratulations. You know, I wanted to check in, make sure if there's anything you need, you know, any service providers or, or whatever. And also I just wanted to triple check now on, on the promise, you know, I didn't get a referral from you, from you guys at closing. Um, but I wanted to just continue to plant that seed that there will be people that are talking about real estate or neighbors you want to get rid of, you know, so I am always here to be a resource if there's anything you ever need. But most importantly, I will take just as good care of anyone you send me as I did with you guys. So who, who do you know? I mean, let's just, let's just spend a second here. Who do you know that might be looking to buy or sell? You know, so it just makes the whole process easier, more business-like in, in my opinion, and way more deliberate. And so you could just get a simple, every one of your files has a simple checklist on the left side where it's like, okay, sign listing agreement and then a couple steps and then call number one, promise. Promise check-in call number one. Then a couple other steps, promise call check-in number two. Then a few more steps, promise call check-in number three. Three days post-closing. So you can just implement a simple system if you're not using like a, a CRM or Trello or whatnot. All right, so that's the second document. Then this uh, is a document that I think everyone can run with. That's like a bonus. Everyone needs to get to 100, 100 Google reviews. Everyone needs to have a Google business profile. Um, you should even be posting pictures of your listings or happy clients on your Google business profile because Google gives you credit for that. <clears throat> It'll do whatever it does with its algorithm. So treat it almost like a little bit like a social profile. It's not very social, but anything you can post up there that you're posting on Facebook, a new client, a new listing, an open house, post on your Google business because it'll just give you, as you get more reviews, it'll give you more traction with the algorithm. And so this is just a very simple process anyone can follow to get Google reviews. So it counts as a touch for your clients, get Google reviews and also ask for referrals. And this is not 100%. You don't have to swipe this 100%. And Annalise, you can share this. Actually, I don't know if I shared this with you. Uh, maybe I didn't, but here. If you can share a viewable version, just make sure you don't share the editable version of it. All right, I'm going to post this one since I just have it right here. All right, so copy. <clears throat> All right, uh, Annalise, when you change the last 
uh, last part to copy, it'll prompt them to copy. Just a little hack there. All right. Um, all right. So this one is pretty simple. So everyone should have a goal to get to 100 Google reviews. Uh, you could go on Facebook Messenger. You can go in your phone if you have your database organized. These are, it's anyone in any market that knows you, knows you're a good person. They know you're in real estate and they would have some kind words to say about you. And they would want to help you in your business. And it could even be a co-broke agent. You know, hey, you know, um, Amy, we did a good deal together. Congratulations. You know, would you be willing to, to give me a Google review? You know, I'll, I'll do the same for you. And they'll be like, what's Google? Like, I don't even have a Google business, you know, profile. Some of you are with a brokerage that, you know, rewards you to help other agents. And if you are, it's a phenomenal opportunity to share this with them if you're in our organization and get them started and they'll be like, man, no one's ever like helped me tactically like that before. I'm like, well, come over to my brokerage. It'd be way better when you're over here. Um, so you guys can use any of any of this in that way. So super easy script. The goal is to get to a hundred. If I were doing this, I'd probably cheat. I probably wouldn't call people. You all should call people. I'm super introverted. I don't really like calling people. I'd probably cheat a little bit and I'd go on Facebook Messenger and I'd probably just commit to using, I'd modify this script here to leave um, to leave them a message, like an audio message on Facebook Messenger. And it probably would work. I'd probably do the even the same thing on text. Like if I, you know, if I could send them an audio and text, I would just say, you know, hey, uh, hey, Chris, uh, hope all's well. Um, hey, I just want to reach out, you know, I know it's been a while. I apologize. I've not been doing such a good job keeping in touch with you. I've got a favor to ask, you know, I'm pushing really hard to expand my digital footprint and Google is a beast in our industry in terms of buyers and sellers are turning to that search engine, you know, to look for agents. Um, I want to ask you unashamed, would you leave me a five-star Google review? Doesn't matter that you're just my best friend from Idaho. I still need you to leave me a Google review. Just say some kind words, put in five stars, say he's a good guy, take good care of you. And as a bonus, there's actually a raffle that I'm, I'm doing. I've got, you know, whatever, two nights stay or a gift certificate or whatever. Um, and if you, if you get your wife to submit a review and your four kids, you'll get six entries to this raffle, right? Has to be legit. They, you know, I don't want to game the system necessarily, um, I want to thank you in advance. This is going to help me tremendously in my business. Um, and if you ever know or hear of anybody who's looking to, even in your market in Idaho, you know, I've got a network of agents across the country. I can pair you with somebody or a neighbor with somebody, or if you're looking to do anything here locally, um, I can help you. So definitely keep me in mind and consider, you know, putting me on a three-way text. I'm going to send you an email with a link to the Google review. I'll also include it here in Facebook Messenger. And then you're done and do that, you know, 10 times a day, Monday through Friday for the next, whatever, 13 weeks. And uh, you'll have a ton of referrals in hand and you'll have over a hundred Google reviews. Really, really simple. And everyone knows a hundred people, especially with Google. It doesn't need to be like people that you've transacted with. Oh, I took too much time doing all that. <clears throat> all right. So that's all the stuff I have to share. I want everyone to commit to implementing the promise. Don't overthink it. Don't say I don't have all the bits in, in line, but the mindset here is that you're going to turn every client into two more closings. You're going to make this bold promise and you will deliver on it. It may be not systematic to start, but you're going to get two clients from every client. So if you close two clients this month or one client this month, that's going to turn into two clients in the next three to six months. And those two clients are going to turn into four clients in the next three to six months. And this thing will snowball on itself. And then you've got a deeper dive script here, but don't, don't overthink this. It really just requires you including this in your listing and buyer packet. And then uh, who here is up for the Google 100 review challenge? Awesome. This is going to be a, I don't like the word game changer, but it is the name of our community. But for some of you, it is going to be a game changer. You actually do it. And it's super low key. Like there, there isn't anyone that's not going to, you know, want to help you build your business. All right. We have almost no time for any comments, questions, uh, or anything. And then, 
Okay. The, the last thing I'll share, and really this goes for anything you imp implement in your business, you can have this hard push over the next, you know, two to three months around getting Google reviews or, um, but make it a part of your process. So like once a quarter, put in your calendar that you're going to do a big push like this for two weeks, you're going to contact 200 people and then make it a part of your ongoing client process where at the closing table, you're going to get everyone to leave you a Google review at the closing table and get your vendors to leave you Google reviews and do the same for them. Right. It becomes really, really fun when you, uh, when you start thinking about it that way. All right. Any comments to add, um, need a part two. I know I could go on this stuff uh, all, all day. Um, but any, uh, one other thing, I know I'm just talking at you guys, client giant. There's two, there's two aspects of client giant that, uh, our members have had massive success with. They've got a quarterly gifting program for like your triple a database. So people that have referred business to you or that are likely to refer business to you, they've got like a $10 a month for a quarterly gifting program. Highly recommend it. And they, they also have in the context of a buyer transaction or a seller transaction, there's there's it's a little bit more expensive, but consider it your marketing budget where they'll gift inside of the, of the context of a transaction. Highly recommend it. Yeah, exactly. And anyone can do this. And this is the way you put like, can you imagine the moat you're going to build around your database, around your clients when you start to implement this? Like this is the kind of service that will get people, like when they overhear, they're at like whatever, Outback and like two tables over, you overhear a conversation about real estate this kind of service and this commitment is what it's good. It's what's going to get your client, your past client to stop at that table and say, give me your phone. I'm going to put my, my agent's cell phone number in your phone. I'm going to put you on a three-way text right now. You've got to reach out to them, right? That's, that's the kind of agent that you want to be known at known as. Awesome guys. Uh, any final thoughts or comments or questions? We could probably do a whole session just on the touch. I'll do a whole session just on the touch, um, the touch system. I think that's that's the first thing we teach in our in our core foundational program. <clears throat> Anything? We've got one minute. Otherwise, you can have this one minute to go get a Google review. It really hey, does. Lars, this is the best way to too when you're getting the Google reviews or you get them to uh, talk to your clients about. Um, you know, lots of other things get, you know, this is, I usually tell agents is the best way to update your database with their birthdays, um, their kids' birthdays. I mean, we, we collect data on all of our clients, their pets' names and everything. And uh, that's part of our 60 touch is sending out uh, cl client cards and things like that, uh, you know, every single month. But that's how we collect it. After we get the review, we actually contact them to update the entire database. Yeah. How do you do that? Uh, do you do that with like a Google form or do you just do it over the phone <laughs> manually? I do it on the phone. I like to just have the conversation with them. Mm -hmm. Now I do have a form I can send them. It's uh, I have something similar to like what you were showing and said, tell us a little bit about you. And it asks, it asks them everything from their favorite restaurant, their favorite color, you know, cause uh, we give away shirts. We give away, you know, gift cards, just $5 gift cards. We give away probably 10 a month to yeah. like local coffee shops and things like that. And um, even get to the point where local coffee shops were giving us free gift cards to give out just to get the business rolling in there. But um, I find that when we get the Google review, it just opens up that whole conversation of having a little bit deeper to get some more information. Yeah, and the mindset, this is such a good share. The the mindset on this, like I said, it's not my natural. Like that, my natural is like, sell a thousand homes a year, generate a bunch of leads, put systems in place. You know, I'm not like naturally wired as like the most, I have to really try hard to remember the warm and fuzzy. It's just not the way God made me. But when you really realize the capitalist side of, of, of you should be thinking, yeah, I get to be like amazingly giving and like supportive and build this system and care about like the stuff Mark was just saying and it's going to lead to business, you know? So like, what if everyone in your database led to one transaction per year? What if it was a hundred percent 
or if you had a segment of your database where like, I just know when I implement my touch system and I take them through this client care system and they, they go into my touch system that they're going to refer one piece of business that closes per year. You only need, if you're doing 20 transactions now and you want to do 50, you need 50 people in your database. May, you may have 250, but there are 50 that would literally bring you a piece of business in the next 12 months. So like when you start to think of that, it's like, holy crap, like it really is that simple. But we're all busy. We all have spouses we're trying to keep happy, like children that are like half dressed in the morning. You know, we're like trying to get a workout in, trying to pray and read the Bible. And it's like, watch a little bit of YouTube, you know, along the way. And it's your time quickly disappears into nothing. And we don't actually think about this stuff. So, all right, good job today. I will uh, get on the calendar for, um, March is already baked out, I think, um, but I will do a, a specific training on the 60 touch. And that's where everyone, we could do a little bit of show and tell where everyone can share some of the different touches they're doing that have uh, generated, you know, business or, or whatnot. So I'll get that on the April training. All right, guys, we'll see you soon. Be good. Bye-bye.